I got rejected from medical school 11 times. Hello and welcome to my channel. Many of you will know me as Nicole's Neuroscience on Instagram, but I'm diversifying into YouTube, so welcome. Contrary to popular belief, my surname is not Neuroscience, it's actually Vignola, even though many people think that my surname's Neuroscience, which I guess if you say it enough time, you just assume that that is the surname that I come by, but it is not my surname. I got rejected from medical school 11 times. So when you're having a bad day, just remember Remember that because I got 11 rejections from medical school. I actually once got rejected again from Leicester University the year after. I hadn't even applied. I'd applied the year before and got rejected and then they sent me a letter to say that they're really sorry but my name got mixed up in the pool of rejections this year again and just wanted to confirm that I'm definitely rejected from medical school. Leicester University. I am a neuroscientist and organizational consultant. I did my undergrad in neuroscience at the University of Bristol. I then went on to do my master's in organizational psychology with a research focus of cognitive neuroscience in the workplace. I started talking about neuroscience online because I really wanted to make neuroscience accessible. I wanted to take the information that we're learning in the lab and bring it out to the wider masses so that people could actually use it in their everyday life. And that is when Nicole's neuroscience kind of blew up by accident on Instagram, which is fantastic because it led me to writing a book called Rewire, Break the Cycle, Alter Your Thoughts and Create Lasting Change. I think it's safe to say that it was a very convoluted uh, way of getting there. I took eight years out of studying, so I studied neuroscience well into my 20s. I was 26 or 27, I can't remember, when I went back to university for the first time. I actually pretty much failed high school, finished with a 48% average across all of my maths and science. So whilst it's not an actual F failure per se, I mean, I don't, it's safe to say that no university is going to accept you with an average of 48% across the board. Let's go way back and tell you the story of how I got into neuroscience because it's one of the biggest questions that I get asked on Instagram. People that want to get into neuroscience, my story is a little bit different and I'll share it with you now. I already said that I basically failed. So for me, studying was kind of out of the books. I thought, well, that's it. It's not going to happen. That's fine. I went to school in South Africa. I then sold all my belongings, everything that I own, to save up to get a ticket to move to the UK, which is what I did. I came to the UK with one suitcase and I ended up getting a job as a receptionist in Virgin Active, then worked my way into being a fitness instructor, then worked my way into being a personal trainer. Whilst working as a personal trainer in Kensington Virgin Active, I actually overheard somebody talking about this access to medicine and biomedical sciences course that you could do. It was a one year course for adults who basically wanted to redeem themselves later in life. It's essentially a A levels package packaged into one year, which I didn't know existed. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that this was a thing. You can basically go and repent and atone all your sins from high school, which is great for people like me and maybe for someone like you. I was 23 at the time, which meant that I got government funding for it, which was amazing because if you were older than 23 at the time, you had to pay for it yourself, which was only about 2000 pounds. But for me, that was a lot of money at the time that I just absolutely did not have. So I applied for it and I got in, great. Whilst doing the application, I had to put down my GCSE grades which is something that you do when you're 15, so the equivalent of what I did in South Africa, which I may have bent the truth and put A's and B's on there, even though I also got C's and D's on that. I wasn't a very good student growing up, as you can evidently tell, but I'm here now. I had to get my manuscripts and certificates from South Africa, but at the time, because when it's summer here, it's winter there, they were closed and I was like, great, I'm just going to long that off for as long as possible and show them that I am a good student and I finished with a distinction. So I may have told a little white lie and that's only because if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been able to get in. I would have had to redo my GCSEs first and then get into the A-levels, which is the right way to do it, but I couldn't afford to not get in because then I would have been 24 the year after, which meant that I would have missed my opportunity to get the government funding. So I did it the wrong way around. I did the A-levels first, and then I went back to do my GCSEs at age 25, which I had to do to get into university. I then applied for medicine. I got four rejections the first year, and I was devastated, but I thought, you know what, I'll just take a year out and I'll try again. Applied again, so in the UK, when you apply for medicine, you have four uh, applications per year, if you if you will. You have an extra one for any other science degree. So what I did the second year round is I applied 
for three medical schools, actually got into both the neuroscience programs and got rejected again from medical school. So that was seven rejections at this point. I think a lot of me wanting to be a doctor was this kind of narrative, the story that I told myself for so long. I'd been saying that since I was a child. And it was almost as if there was no other way. You know, I had kind of blinders on, like that's what I'm gonna do, that's what I want to be. And it was almost like I'd put emphasis on the title and the role, but I didn't see the encompassing picture that accompanies a job role, like being a doctor. And that is that ultimately I wanted to help people and it wasn't necessarily by being a medical doctor. I got to still do that as a neuroscientist, but in a different format. And for a long time, it was like I was kind of mourning this dream that I hadn't achieved. And it was, it was a big toll. It was huge. It was heavy on my heart. It was, I mean, I remember crying the first few rejections, like quite, quite a lot. You know, I was devastated. I was quite literally down in the dumps. I had to, I guess in some ways, reconstruct my idea of who I was going to be as a person because I'd put too much emphasis on this external validation to prove my worthiness, if you will. I got into neuroscience and I'm not gonna lie, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Absolutely loved it, also hated it. I had an Essex Central crisis when I graduated because I was like, what am I gonna do with this degree? Lol, I'm never gonna use it. I then tried to apply for medicine again and I got an additional four rejections on top of that. So that's my 11 rejections from medical school. Then I thought, you know what, let's reframe again. Let's redivert, let's look at this failure and use it as fuel to understand what my path is supposed to be. Like maybe, maybe I shouldn't have been a doctor and that's fine. Maybe I should have been a doctor and that's also fine. But either way, it's about, I guess, being happy with the journey that you're on. And that's when I started to really curate this appreciation for being happy where you are in the moment and kind of, if you will, watering your own grass, right? People always think that the grass is greener on the other side, but sometimes it is just where you allow it to flourish. So I guess I started to water my own garden and that's when I started to doing research as to where I wanted to go next. So I wanted to merge neuroscience with organizational psychology so that I could essentially help people on a wider scale. I wanted to take all the things that I was learning at university, like the importance of sleep, exercise, mindfulness, productivity, etc., and actually apply it to people's lives. So I started working as a public speaker in organizations, started going into companies as a consultant and essentially helping the company make more money by making the people within it happier by educating them. And that is a niche that I carved out for myself, which I absolutely loved. Amongst that, Nicole's neuroscience grew and started flourishing. And then I got the book deal, which has been incredible and that's meant that I've been able to amplify my voice even more and this is why I've now started a YouTube as well so that I can continue to endeavor on this journey of essentially helping people understand their brains so they can take the emphasis off themselves and kind of go it's not me it's my brain because oftentimes when I explain things to people I see grown men in corporations go oh penny drop I understand now Yes, I'll meditate. Yes, I'll prioritize my sleep, etc. Because I'm attaching the science and the mechanisms to it so that people can really understand what's actually going on. And it's not just a placard on the bathroom stall that says, go and meditate for five minutes to feel better. It doesn't really resonate with a lot of people until you actually understand what is going on. So ultimately, all of this came about from the essence of failure. And it's funny because, you know, when we are failing, when we do fail, especially the first few times, it's a real kick in the teeth. And sometimes we even attribute it to there's something being wrong with us on our identity, who we are as a person. But failure to the brain is essentially another data entry point for that little meat package that is sitting within your skull uh, to tell you what to do, or what not to do to get to a particular outcome again. If you know what you've done wrong and you can redivert and redirect, then it's just information. You're just upgrading the software and now you know what not to do to not do that again. And what I've learned is that you can absolutely recreate yourself, recreate this idea of who you're going to be. And it doesn't have to be a specific pinpoint of where you're gonna end up because what I wanted to do was help people and it encompassed a different version of doing that 
that wasn't necessarily medicine, but it was still within the realms of wanting to speak to people and help them better themselves. So if you have a deep desire for wanting to do something, I challenge you to not be so rigid with how that's going to end up. Sometimes I think we focus too much on the end result that we kind of forget about the journey within it and what we're still doing without the label that we've attached or the confines of the box that we've put ourselves in. If I had tried to pursue medicine over and over again and I hadn't learned from my failure and hadn't seen it as an opportunity to flourish and grow in a different department, I'd probably still think that I myself am a failure because you can go on your whole life being like, oh, I was going to be a doctor and play on that failure. And I think that a lot of people do that sometimes they will always kind of reminisce on what could have been instead of seeing the future and thinking actually, what can I continue to do in a different direction? One of the other questions that I get asked a lot is whether I came from money. And that's not, it's asked in good faith. I must say that they're not always like, do you come from money? But people want to know if you have to have a lot of money to be able to create something of yourself. And no, absolutely did not come from money. I had to work my way from the bottom up. I got all of the grants, got all of the loans. I have a lot of student debt, but that's fine. That's future Nicole's problem. But it allowed me to invest in my future. And so I didn't come from money. I guess it is expensive. I was quite fortunate in the sense that as a 27 year old in an undergraduate program, I was working as a personal trainer, which meant that I got to earn quite good money compared to some of my peers, which meant that I got to benefit from the grants because as an adult student, you get a lot of funding and grants, etc., because you're assumed to be estranged from your parents or unreliant on them, which I absolutely was at that age. And so, yeah, it was, it was tough, but it was worth it. If you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed to my channel yet, then please do so now. You'll really be helping me in growing this channel. My mission is to make neuroscience and psychology accessible so that we can make everyday living a little bit easier on ourselves. If you have any questions, and I please encourage you to put them in a the comment section right now because I will be doing a weekly Q&A where I'll be answering the questions that I'll ask the most.